Lord, everyone. This is another day that the Lord has made. We're rejoicing and we're being glad in it. Welcoming you to the sanctuary of the Second Baptist Church, 200 Locust Street, all the way from Roselle, New Jersey, in the United States of America. We're celebrating today in the seventh month of the year of our Lord, 2021, on this, the 11th day of July. Praise the Lord. We're beginning our service as we open up with hymn number 217. No, not one. Hymn number 217. Hallelujah. Because there is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Hymn number 217. So all of you that can and will, let's please stand as we sing this song together to the glory of God. Amen. There's not a friend like the holy Jesus. No, not
good, Jeffrey. Children online, very good. Yes, yes. Everyone together now. Sing it. Somebody needs a touch today. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs salvation. Someone needs deliverance, oh God. Someone needs help, oh God. Because they heard somebody say, oh my help comes from the Lord. So Lord, they come to try you for themselves. They come to seek you for themselves because they heard the good news report that God is. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So God, have your way. For you are the potter and we're the clay. We ask that you'll wash us and cleanse us of all of our sins, all of our iniquities, transgressions, and shortcomings, that we might bask and bathe in your presence, oh God, that your name will be glorified through the lives that we live in the service that we give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. God, hallelujah. And as we remain standing, our scripture reading is coming today from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 down to verse number 20. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through verse 20 in its entirety. And the Word of God says, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, meaning Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them, that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief. 
and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Verse 15, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. May the Lord God have rich blessings in the reading and hearing of his most holy word. We will continue in our worship singing hymn number 411, hymn 411, Lift Him Up. For Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Hymn number 411, Lift Him Up. 411, to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus.
We want to pray for the husband, children, and family of Asha Cook Brown, Abraham Clark High School, uh, who was uh, class of 1995, who died suddenly in her sleep this past Tuesday. Amen. And then we're praying again, as we said, for the country of Haiti and the assassination of their 50-year-old, 53-year-old president, Jovenel Moise, uh, and uh, the injuries, uh, injuries sustained to his wife, uh, currently being treated in Florida. And then, as again, we're praying for our sick and shut-in members and the bereaved and those in military and law enforcement. Now, on a happy note, we're celebrating birthdays this week. Tomorrow, July the 12th, uh, Sister Shantina Fleming. <laughs> and also, we're celebrating anniversaries this week. Friday, July the 16th, Pastor Mike and Reverend Marette Tyree, 11 years and five children. <laughs> And may they all have a blessed day. I don't know why I just added the children in there, but I just figured I better just put that in there to God be the glory. Amen. Uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday school is again suspended for the summer, so please stay tuned for further information regarding resuming classes on September the 19th of this year. Now, we're, we're considering, strongly considering, and the, I, we're going to, I believe we're going to, it's, we're going to confirm that change. Remember, we're considering uh, changing the hour of Sunday school, uh, and we're going to be in person, but considering changing the hour from 9 o'clock in the morning uh, to uh, 9.45 to 9 o'clock to 10.15. And then uh, we want to uh, uh, have our morning, our 10 a.m. morning service as we're returning back to normal. We're going to have our 10 a.m. service at 10.30. Amen. Just a half an hour later, praise the Lord. And... Uh, just so that our teachers and our staff and our classes in Sunday school can have a full lesson because things have been cut very, 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 very short. And uh, the teachers have been studying all week to just be able to have a short period of time to teach their students. So uh, as of September the 19th, we're looking forward to that change in Jesus' name. We'll be discussing that with our advisory council and our officers uh, of the church uh, very shortly. Uh, but then also, we want you to save the date uh, Sunday, July the 18th, Faith of Psalm 23 Outreach Ministry will host an outdoor food fundraiser immediately following our 10 a.m. service in uh, our church's parking lot. And so there's a flyer uh, for the menu details. And uh, I don't have that flyer, but praise the Lord, that is next Sunday, July the 18th, after our 10 a.m. worship service. Amen? A food fundraiser uh, by our uh, Psalm, Faith of Psalm 23 Outreach Ministry. Then, uh, Saturday, July the 24th, uh, Roselle's first inter-church fellowship at Warren Echo Park, 12 noon to 5 p.m., and that's going to be at what's called the, the uh, Gregory Park number one and Gregory Park number two. That's in Warren Echo Park, right by where the waiting, or should I say the, the splash pool is, or the splash pond, and then uh, there's a basketball court right next to that, but across the street from that, and on the other side of the, of the lake, I mean, there's to the immediate left, you'll see uh, two uh, picnic groves there. And that will be uh, fronting the lake. And we're gonna be there, we're gonna have two, two uh, picnic groves uh, so that the eight churches can gather together. We're gonna have a lot of fun over there. And uh, free food, amen. Free, free drinks, amen. No alcoholic beverages, of course, <laughs> amen. And uh, gonna have a whole lot of fun fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters of churches in Roselle, to God be the glory. So that's Saturday, July 24th, amen. And uh, so we're looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful time. The pastors are excited about it, and I believe the churches are too, amen, July 24th. And then Saturday, August 7th, the eighth annual Independent Authors Book Expo will be taking place at the Roselle Borough Hall parking lot. Uh, that's from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., of which our very own sister Renee Smith is the founder and director, and the event will be showcasing authors, poets, illustrators, and editors. There will be a, a children's corner with free books, arts, and crafts, and there will be promotional giveaways, prizes, and surprises. Amen. Now, there are ways that you can uh, continue to be faithful in your giving to Second Baptist Church. Uh, firstly, you can bring your offering to the church every Sunday morning at, 10, at 9 o'clock between the hours of 9 and 10. 
uh, at the parking lot door. Our trustees will be, uh, will be delighted to receive your offering there. You can personally bring it in to the church as we have our services at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning during the time of this pandemic. Or you can give your offering to your assigned diaconate member. They'll be glad to bring your offering personally to the church on your behalf. That's the assigned diaconate member that every church member has, uh, and they will bring it to, to the church as you give it to them. Also, uh, electronically, you can give to, uh, through our APLOS website, and that's sim simply text to give, G-I-V-E, the dollar amount that you'd like to give, and text it to 833 Five six one zero one seven nine. That's text to give the dollar amount that you'd like to give to eight three three five six one zero one seven nine. Then follow up the prompts. Now there are also ways to stay connected to Second Baptist Church. Uh, we have our prayer call lines every uh, Sunday, every Monday through Friday at five forty five a.m. as well as six p.m. and then on Fridays at twelve noon. Uh, so you can call in. Uh, 605-475-3215, access code 916-920. Weekly uh, virtual Sunday school, again, has been suspended until September, so we'll give you all of the itinerant information as we approach the 19th of September. Now, we're still having our in-person worship services. We're still exercising social distancing. When you come in, you'll have your temperature check. There's hands-free sanitizing. In the bathrooms, there are hands-free uh, 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 fountains, uh, faucets, and hands-free towel dispensers. Uh, you'll also need to be wearing your gloves and your mask, covering your, your nose and your mouth throughout the entire service, with the exception of those that will be at the podium so that your voices aren't muzzled and so that your words and messages can be crystal clear. Amen. But uh, we were just asking, amen, that everyone will practice the proper social distancing protocol and there will be proper seating arrangements so that we are uh, safely and socially distanced. Now, also, we're uh, streaming live by way of Facebook and Instagram and also YouTube and our telephone conference line. The telephone conference line is area code 978 990 Access code 374-329-POUND. And then uh, that same uh, access code and same telephone conference uh, call line, we will be having our Tuesday morning at 1030 Bible study and our Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, by the same numbers, 978-990-5000, access code 374-329. If you're between the age of 18 and 35, you're a young adult. So we have young adult Bible studies. Pastor Mike is teaching you every Thursday evening, and you have those numbers. And then please note, church family, as our doors are open for church services in person, please stay connected for updates from your diaconate uh, ministry leaders. Measures are still in place to ensure confidential health screening, social distancing, and hygienic practices. We ask that when in services, again, please wear your mask, covering your nose and your mouth at all times. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or concerns, uh, Second Baptist Church membership, you can contact Deacon Joseph Williams or Reverend Burley Jones uh, should you have any uh, urgent needs. To God be the glory. I believe that's all of the notices and announcements that we have. Uh, if I have missed anything, please charge it to my head, not to my heart. But the most important announcement of all is this. Jesus Christ is soon to come. And it has to be ready because ready or not, Jesus is coming. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to break away a little bit from our normal uh, protocol of, of our service because I'm going to ask um, that uh, Deaconess Margaret Briggs will come up in just a few moments. Uh, and and we're going to, I'm going to ask her to pray about Haiti, amen, and about the safety of Haiti, as well as whatever God puts on her heart as far as our country and the world, in Jesus' name, amen? amen. Praise God. But uh, I just want you to look to the left or right of you, in front of you, behind you, and say to your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. ready or not, ready Jesus is coming. Jesus Are, you Are you ready? Look to another neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, neighbor. Ready, or ready or not, Jesus is coming. Jesus. Are, you Are you ready? And as Smokey the Christian Bear would say, only you can prevent eternal fires.
Amen. To God be the glory. Thank God for Brother Naphtali Carney for the artwork. Amen. Dennis Margaret, would you come up? Amen. Uh, these are perilous times, so I believe uh, we, we just need to stop and we need to pray. Amen. Concerning the situation with Haiti and concerning our world. Even the United States, we're in trouble. We need help. To God be the glory. But we're praying for peace. Yes. God bless you, Dennis Margaret. together yes. and to give you praise and glory and honor. Yes. We pray, Lord God, for the country of Haiti, Lord God, and all of the people that is in that country, Lord God. For, Lord God, that land is yours. The people are yours. And, Lord God, the country is rich, rich in oil, Lord God, rich in minerals, Lord God. Rich, Father God, because you had allowed them, Lord God, to be rich, Lord God. But, Lord God, they are suffering under the hand of the persecutor, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that you would intervene, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God. We give glory and honor to you, Lord God, for you see what's going on in you, Lord, Lord God. The purpose and the reason, Father God, for the brutal slain, Lord God. And all of the chaos that are rising up in that country, Lord God. For you have blessed them, Father God. And Lord God, they have, Lord God, suffering under the hands of the greed, Lord God. Because of that oil, Lord God, it is all is yours. The, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof in the world and they that dwell therein. It all belongs to you, Father. The oil is yours, Lord God. The goal is yours, Lord God. Yeah. That country is rich, Lord God. And there's no reason for them to be poor, Lord God, and suffering under the hand of all of those that, Lord God, of greed, Lord God, and want, Lord God, what don't belong to them, Father. We pray, Lord God, that you answer the call of the people, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Encourage and strengthen them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We give glory and honor to you, Lord God, for you hear their cry, you know what they are going through, Lord God. And only you and you alone, Lord God, is able, Lord God, to help them to rise up, Lord God, and give you glory and honor, Lord God, because it all belongs to you, Lord God. And Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, that we continue praying and interceding for all of them. The women and children, Lord God. All of those, Lord God. There's no reason for them in poverty, Lord God. Because it is so rich, rich, Lord God. And Lord God, we know that you see the oppression. We know that you hear the cry. And that you are able, Lord God. Bless them and encourage them, Father. For you've given them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord God. To stand up and trust you, Lord God. And give you praise and glory and honor, Lord God. And turn and seek your face, Lord God. And Lord God, you are able, Lord God. To turn that situation around, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You did it before, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. You're able to do it again, Lord God. Yeah. And we're trusting and believing you, Father God, almighty God, Lord God. Because you're God all by yourself, Lord God. This world is yours, Lord God. You call it into existence, Lord God. And you're able, Lord God, to bless your people, Lord God. We thank and praise you, Lord God. And we know that you hear us always, Lord God. Help us to continually praying and interceding on their behalf, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And on our country too, Lord God, and on all of the country, all of the leaders, Lord God. In this world, I think that they control everything, but it is all yours, Lord God. And Lord God, you're just giving them time, Lord God, to come down on their knees and seek your faith and humble themselves at your mighty hand, Lord God. And turn and seek you, Lord God, while there is time and breath in these yes, bodies. God. Lord God, and we thank you. We praise you, Lord God. Help us as Christians, yes. believers, to continue praying and seeking your face, Father. Not only for Haiti, but for this country and for the world and for all those, Lord God, that are leaders to Lord God. 
to seek you and come to know you personally and the part of their sin and turn from their wicked ways, Lord God, and take care of the poor, the need of the winners, Lord God, the offering, Lord God. There's plenty for everybody, Lord God. You have supplied all that. Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, and there's no reason, Father God, that there will be poverty, Jesus. Lord God. No reason Jesus. for there to be anyone yes. living in huts. Jesus. When there's plenty of land and yes, homes Lord. could be built for the people. Bless them and encourage and strengthen only you can. Help us, Lord God, to continue, continually seeking you, praying and worshiping glorifying you, Lord God, and magnifying your name. I thank you, Father God, for hearing us always, Lord yeah. God, and for answering our prayer. We give praise and glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yeah. 
Father God, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts, let them be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord, for you are our strength, you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You know, it's amazing that um, over the last couple of months, uh, I've heard different loved ones share about their elderly members or their families that might have been sick and shut in and burned, uh, who might have had maybe a little dementia, a little Alzheimer's. Uh, but when they would tune into our services, uh, it was, they, they might not remember anything, but all of a sudden when the hymns are being sung, they know all the words. They perk up when they hear the hymns. And, and they sing the words without even reading or even uh, having a hymn book because there's something in their heart, even though their memory might be lost at certain times, but here, when the hymns are sung, they come alive. So there's life in these hymns, amen. There's life in the word of God. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So thanks be to God, we're still singing hymns. One of my good pastor friends says, uh, he said, Pastor Moore, you, you still singing those old hymns? Yeah, you can it, brother. <laughs> I'm enjoying those old hymns. I said, praise God, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh. We're not going to depart from the hymns now. We're going to sing praise and worship songs and all the rest. Amen. But we're always going to sing the old time faithful. Amen. That, you know, I, I think uh, what's happening is a lot of times with our newer generation, which I'm not blaming or casting doubts, doubts or dispersions, but our newer generation, uh, there's an attraction uh, to songs when it has beat to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we could sing this song what we have a friend having what a friend we have in Jesus, but they might improvise it. Mm -hmm. And they, they they might add a little <coughs> <coughs> What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, you, know, you know, they might but they're getting the message across their way. That's how they receive it. Amen. Some people receive it in sound bites. However, it's best received. Feed them, feed that audience, praise God, amen. But just realize, you know, we, we the old timey, old time folks, uh, if I can uh, just call me the old timer, I won't call you old timey. <laughs> but, uh, you know, from old school, amen, uh, we, we sang songs that had substance and significance, had words, amen, more than the beats, because it was the words that they were the words that grabbed us, gripped us, that gravitated our hearts uh, towards Jesus Christ, amen, and towards, uh, matter of fact, when, when we sang love songs back then, though we sang words, even when they sing ooh, 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 baby, baby, <laughs> and the thrill is gone. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't saved my whole life, you know, praise God, but there were words, and they would explain why they had the heart pains, and why they had the heart throbs, or whatever it might have been, and so, to God be the glory, we thank God for him. So that was the, that was the first message, amen. I wasn't intending on saying that, but it just was uh, brought back to my remembrance. But today our text uh, has been taken from Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 1 through verse number 20. I'd like to entitle today's message, When It Depends on Who's Telling You. When It Depends on Who's Telling You. Okay. Isaiah 53 and 1 says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Mm -hmm. You know, for some reason, uh, the world has uh, been enamored with and has been caught up in what's called respect of persons. Mm -hmm. In other words, it depends on who's doing the talking. Mm -hmm. It depends on who's telling you. So there's a tendency to receive information or reports from, let's look at a couple of contrasts of, of tendencies of who you prefer to hear a report from. For example, uh, would you uh, prefer to hear a college graduate over a high school dropout? Some people have a tendency to prefer a model citizen over a former drug addict or a former gangbanger. There's a preference of hearing a renowned preacher 
over an, un, an, or, over an unorthodox preacher who is a voice crying in the wilderness saying, make straight the way of the Lord. There's a tendency to uh, want to accept the presence of a virgin woman over a former prostitute saved from sin. There's generally a preference to prefer children of darkness and sin over children of light in the Lord. So it's a matter of uh, depending on who's telling you who's going to receive what. And I think we're all, we all are not guilty of that, but we all are subject to that. Who we're going to receive uh, the message from. Who, who we're going, whose report we're going to believe. Depending upon, it could be class, could be status, could be ethnicity. Well, I don't, I'm not listening to them. I'm not listening to the, those people. They're not in my class. They're not in my category, you know. And so uh, the, the sermon topic is when it depends on who's telling you. We're living in a world that is full of contrasting reports. God and his servants are giving the Lord's report of how to coexist and find God's plan to achieve eternal life. Whereas Satan and the world's system are giving contradictory reports on, to ha on how to live divisively and separatistically while telling the big lie that there is no heaven or hell by brazenly spewing out the false teaching that heaven and, heaven and hell are right here on earth. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, it, it's going to require faith to believe the things that God is espousing, the things that God's children are espousing. So it might seem like fantasy to the world, or it might seem like delirium to the world, or the world might look at us Christians as if we have just completely lost our mind. We're plum loco, we're crazy, we're fanatics, believing in a God that you don't see, going to a heaven that you've never been, believing that God can answer prayer that is not really physical, but it's an intangible. You're praying as opposed to just doing. Get the job done by doing it. Prayer doesn't work, the world says. But see, that's where faith comes in. Because Hebrews chapter 11 says, now faith is the substance. See, you're looking at substance. It's like, uh, I, if I see it, I'll believe it. But faith is the substance of things not seen. Because Jesus said, look, you're more blessed if you uh, believe and have not seen than those that see and now want to believe. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. In other words, it's like that treasure box, that, that promise box. Uh, it's like that bucket list. You know, those things that you hope for, those things that you dream to accomplish, those goals, those aspirations that you hope to accomplish, and, and, and you, you pursue them. It's not just a fantasy request box. And it's not uh, something that you just uh, hope will just poof into existence. No, but you're pursuing those goals. You're pursuing those dreams. You're pursuing those aspirations. It's just something to be a constant reminder to you, maybe even in writing, well, this is what I want to accomplish. But now that you have set those goals, it's just a constant reminder to you, don't forget, these are the goals that you have set to accomplish. Have you pursued them? Where are you today regarding these pursuits? So it's just serving as a reminder, where are you? So if you aspire uh, to uh, get a college degree, well, what are you doing about the college degree? Did you check out the colleges? Did you apply? Do you know what's necessary? Did you pay the fee to go to college? Did you apply for the grants, for the loans, or, or the funds to get into college? Did you apply for the scholarship? Uh, are, are you taking the classes? Are you taking sufficient classes? Amen. Uh, how close are you to graduation? Do you have a target date for graduation? In other words, you need to set some goals for yourself. And then 
have your little checklist and say, okay, I've accomplished this, I've accomplished that, I'm closer to uh, my goal being completed or accomplished or coming to fruition. So uh, the faith is a substance of things hoped for, it's the evidence of things not seen. Now the world can say, well, how can you believe in a God that you can't see? Well, I say, well, you, uh, I, I take a fan or something like that and I'll just you know, wave it in front of their face. I said, did you feel that? They said, yeah. I said, well, did you see that? What are you talking about? Did you see the air that just blew across your face and, you know, touched your hair? No. But you believe in air? Yeah. Oh. So I don't see God, but I know God is real. Now you feel the air. I feel God. <laughs> I mean, I feel him in my hands. I feel him on my feet. I feel him all over me. <laughs> I'm getting excited now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But it's got to be an experiential no-so thing. I know that I know that I know Jesus lives. You ask me how I know he, he lives within my heart. He walks with me. <laughs> and he talks with me. And he tells me on his own. And the joys we should have. And we can go on and on. And, and, the, and the hymn book is just filled and laden with those kind of testimonies of the reality of God. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. Even you he'll pardon. There is no secret what God can do. And so it's all about faith. But there are people that are in complete denial, and it depends on who's telling them the story if they're going to believe or not. Which brings us to today's text. We find uh, that Jesus had... Uh, risen from the dead, we find that uh, his body last known by the women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, they were coming to the tomb wondering, well, who's going to roll the stone away? It's quite heavy. And it was just as the sun was about to rise, they came and they noticed that the stone had already been rolled away. They walked into the sepulcher and they saw a, 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 an angel that was inside with a white robe clothed right down to the feet, with a long robe, the Bible lets us know, long white robe. And he said, and he said uh, you're seeking Jesus of Nazareth? Uh, he's not here. He's risen like he said he would. Go tell his disciples and Peter, see, because there had to be a special message for Peter because Peter, after he had denied the Lord three times, he felt the Lord would never forgive me. But there was a special delivery message for Peter to encourage his soul that the Lord was still thinking about him and the Lord still considered him as one of his own. That he was not disowning Peter because Peter disowned him. Praise God. Because the Lord said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you always to the end of the world. So he said, go tell my disciples in Galilee and Peter uh, that I, I, I'm going to meet them in, in Galilee as I promised that I would. Now can you imagine, here come these ladies and they're running with haste. They're not telling anybody else, they're just running with haste to go tell the apostles. Uh, and they said, hey, apostles, guess what? We saw Jesus and Peter. The angel said that, that Jesus is going to meet you here too. He singled you out, Peter. He didn't mention James or John or Matthias. He didn't mention any of the other apostles' names. He mentioned your name specifically. He said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Peter, he said, can you imagine you being Peter? You denied the Lord, thinking that the Lord had written you off and, and, and had forsaken you totally because you forsook him. And then all of a sudden, to hear your name, me, Peter, can you imagine your heart skipping beats? Jesus, he... He, he was thinking about me. He's going to talk to me. He singled me out. Didn't mention anybody else. Who else's name did he mention? He didn't mention the other name. He only mentioned your name, Peter. Oh, I can only imagine that, that the forgiveness that Peter was feeling in his soul. It's like, oh, my heart is warm. You mean Jesus is really thinking about me? I'm special to Jesus. He, he not only gave me honorable mention, he gave me mention over the other apostles. So, but the thing was, the disciples didn't believe it. They didn't believe the story of Mary Magdalene. She was the one that had seven demons. 
that Jesus cast out. Oh, that's just Mary Magdalene. And then Mary, the mother of James and Salome. Well, they're women. Who's going to take the word of a woman? Well, that's during that chauvinistic type of time period. It's quiet now. I didn't hear any amens because I guess maybe it's chauvinistic now too, right? Okay, praise God. All right, sisterhood, I, I, I hear you <laughs> when I didn't hear you. <laughs> praise the Lord. But they didn't believe their report. And then there were two other uh, disciples. They weren't apostles and they were walking down the countryside and they were talking about the, the, the events that had taken place, about the crucifixion and the burial, resurrection and all. And um, Jesus, after rising from the dead, uh, now appears uh, to these two men. Uh, he's, having, he's listening to their conversation. And then uh, he said, uh, what are you talking about? And they said, are, are you so brand new to uh, our community that you don't know what happened, what, what events took place, how they crucified Jesus? And so as they were talking to Jesus, uh, Jesus revealed himself to them, and they realized, we saw the Lord. Those two men ran to the apostles and said, we saw the Lord. We saw Jesus. We were walking down the road, and he talked to us, and, and, and we came to tell you, gave, come to give you the good news report that Jesus is risen from the dead. They didn't believe them. Because those are country folk. Those are farmers and the blue-collar workers and we, we're not listening to you guys. You're from another region. You know, because sometimes there was just a little racism and prejudice amongst people, uh, especially if you were a Samaritan, because the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritan. Mm. You, what, 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 what's your background? I'm a Samaritan. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or what's your background? I'm, I'm, I'm a Hebrew. Samaritan. Oh. They despise each other. So uh, for a Samaritan to try to tell the Hebrews about Jesus, forget it. We don't want to hear what you have to say. For a Hebrew to tell the Samaritans about Jesus, forget it. We don't want to hear what you have to say. For a Christian to tell a Jew about Jesus Christ, many most Jews don't want to hear what you have to say. Especially if you initially start talking about Jesus. They'll cut you off immediately. Unless you start talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and start talking about uh, the God of Moses and the God of, uh, of Deborah and talk about Old Testament events, they'll listen so long as up and until you get to the point of talking about Jesus, then they'll cut you off. But if you can associate the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the promises that were made from Genesis to Malachi, or Malachi, if, if you're Italiano, <laughs> amen. And then if you can make that link between the Old Testament uh, prophecies that were talking about the Messiah and make the link to let them know that that same Messiah is the same Jesus Christ that was promised to come through all of those prophecies, he is now the fulfilled prophesied Messiah to come. Now they're enlightened, they all understand. But you at least have to have a way or a door of entry to start talking to them because if you immediately off the bat start talking about Jesus, the Jews are not going to hear you. Muslims are not going to hear you. But you're going to have to talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And sometimes to the Muslims, you're going to have to talk about the God of Ishmael. Right. Amen. So that we can have a talking piece, amen, so we can have something in common to let them know we're not talking about a strange God. We're not talking about a different God. We're talking about the exact same God who is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Ishmael, amen. And so it's about, it depends on who's telling you the report. Now, we said faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things not seen. People who overcame the words and doubts of naysayers are all listed in the Word of God. Or should I say many, many examples are listed in the Word of God. They had to overcome the words of naysayers. For example, Sarah and Abraham. 
uh, Sarah, in your old age, you're going to have a child. Now, here you are, ladies, you're 90 years old. Angel comes and says, you're going to have a child. You come and tell all of the rest of the women and everybody else you're going to have a child. Sister Julian, you be the 99-year-old woman and say, and stand up and tell, say, hey, ladies and gentlemen, God says I'm going to have a child. And you're 90 years old. Stand up and just say, hey, ladies, I'm going to have a child. Hey, ladies, I'm going to have a baby at 99 years old. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are some of you ladies thinking? You, you don't have to say, I, I can only imagine. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who does she think she's fooling? And guess what? A lot of you started laughing, didn't you? When you heard that. Well, guess what? That's what her son's name was, laughter. <laughs> Amen. Isaac meant laughter. She laughed when she heard the story from Abraham. Hey, Sarah, guess what? God says, we're going to have a child. She started laughing. <laughs> oh, get out of here, Abe. <laughs> Stop joking with me now. You, do you know how old I am? <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> Too old, right? And so according to nature and how we look at things naturally, that's not going to happen. Okay? But who told Abraham that he was going to have a child? God did. Through, did he tell him through an angel or did he tell him through angel? told him through an angel, right? And so Abraham believed. Who told Sarah? Who told Sarah that she was going to have the child? Abraham. Abraham said, Sarah, the angel told me, God said, we will have a child. So now, the both of them are rejoicing. Now everybody else around them is probably thinking, you two, you, 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 you have dementia, Alzheimer's, you, you just lost your mind. You just out of it. It's not going to happen. Don't you know how old you are? 100-year-old men and 90-year-old women don't have babies. It just can't happen. That, that's, the, the kitchen is closed. <laughs> Amen. But God spoke the word and said, no, the kitchen is open. Dinner is going to be served one year from now. And guess what? To everybody's amazement and shock, guess what? She had a <laughs> She had a baby. But that's impossible. But those things that are impossible with man are possible with God. And it all depends on who's telling you and who's and, and how you're going to receive it. Because there are a lot of people that are being told things they just won't receive. Because of who it's coming from. Or because of the situations and circumstances like, well, that, that can't be. That, that's impossible. Well, then look at, look at another situation about the naysayers. Naaman, the leper. Naaman is, uh, the king had heard uh, that there's a prophet uh, that, that can heal. God had given him the gift of uh, working miracles and healing. And, uh, and, and so... He sent his servant, gave him leave, and sent some of his other servants to accompany him uh, to, to go uh, seek out the prophet Elijah to be healed of his leprosy. So now uh, he gets to the prophet's door to his house, and uh, Elijah's servant answers the door. Yes, may I help you? Uh, I'm Naaman, and I came uh, to be healed because I understand the, the man of God, the prophet of God is here. I want him to, to, to heal me of my leprosy. Servant goes up, tells Elijah. Elijah says, uh, go, tell, uh, go tell Naaman to jump in the lake. <laughs> he actually didn't say that, but that's how he took it. Because he said, tell your master Naaman to go wash in the, in the, river, the, the Jordan River. What? The Jordan River? That old septic tank, that nasty river that people wash their clothes and bath, bathtub and bath facilities and you know, toilet facilities and wash 
all of them, no, I, I, I'm, there, aren't there seven more pristine rivers that are greater than that? And he wants me to dip in the Jordan? That's similar to say, go jump in the lake. That's an insult, I'm not doing that. So now he's in a huff and he's walking away. And his servants got master. Now, why are you walking away? The Jordan River, I'll never get myself in the Jordan I'm, I'm above that. Jordan River's beneath me. I'm, I'm not going. And, and so he's going away. And his servants get mastered. If he had told you to go out and, 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 and perform some uh, great feat, destroy masses of enemies or uh, uh, some, some great feat of life, wouldn't you perform that? He's telling you to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. So you need to humble yourself, Master. Don't you want to be healed of your leprosy? So, all right. Reluctantly, he went. And now his servants are watching him, and he's feeling like I am making a complete fool out of myself in front of all these servants in the Jordan River of all places. But he said, how many times? Seven. Oh, seven. That's just too many times. Because that's letting my servants know I'm foolish, I'm stupid if things don't work out. So here we go. One. Two. Oh boy, this better work because oh, look at all this sludge on me. I'm embarrassed if this don't work. Oh, that prophet better be right. Four. Still nothing yet. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm going to be the more embarrassed. Five. Still no change. Oh my goodness. I got two more times to go. Six. And this is the this is the big one. Because if this doesn't work, I'll be the laughing stock. I can't go back to my master's house because everybody in the kingdom is going to laugh at me. My servants, they're going to disrespect me because they say, look how foolish or why why should we follow a fool? And even those people, those Hebrews, they're really going to laugh and say, that, that foolish. Okay. God, please let this one work. Please let this work. Seven. He's kind of afraid to open his eyes. But he's hearing some noise in the background. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Ooh! Oh! Look, look, look. And he said, look, look at what? Look at I'm clean! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here! The God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he healed me! I'm healed. Thank you. Now I won't have to be a laughing stock. I can go back home and tell the king that the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's real because I once was filled with leprosy, but now I'm healed. I once doubted what they were telling me, even the ones that told me, but now I'm here. I have a testimony. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. because he didn't have to listen to the servant of Elijah. Because he preferred something else to be done. And for some, he preferred to, to have Elijah come down and put his hands on him. But Elijah sent him away to the River Jordan. He preferred to go to pristine rivers to dip in. But Elijah sent him to the Jordan River. And had he given in to, given way to his preferences, he would have lost out on his miracle Amen. of his healing. Amen. And then there was a woman with the issue of blood. Right. There's no sense in trying to go to Jesus. You spent all of your living 
on doctors. As a matter of fact, it grew worse. You, you have no more money. Forget about trying to reach Jesus. There are too many people trying to touch him. You're weak. You've hemorrhaged and you are absolutely frail and weak. What's the use of trying to even pursue to touch Jesus? There are too many thousands trying to touch Jesus. And do you think you're going to touch Jesus? <laughs> it's like many of you probably tried to get into the presence of a particular individual and they said, forget it. It's not going to happen. You won't be able to talk to the CEO of your company. You won't be able to talk to the governor. You won't be able to talk to the Senate president. Uh, Dick and Joe Williams, yeah. did you just sit, did you, did we, did, a little while ago, did you sit elbow to elbow with the Senate president, Sweeney? Yes, I did. Did you sit in the presence of the governor and had a little conversation with the clergy uh, coalition? Yes, I did. Did you ever dream in a million years that you'd be able to do that? But God has favor. Yeah, 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 yeah. God has favor. Matter of fact, he'll put you in the presence of kings. Yes, he will. And who knows? Maybe, maybe one of us are going to uh, sit down and have lunch with uh, former President Barack Obama. Think that's impossible? Well, did you think it was impossible for a black man to become president? Were you proven to be wrong? And he was president twice. When you thought, I've never lived to see a, a, a black person become president of the United States, and yet God disproved that, that thought. And here he became president of the United States twice by popular election. And then, and so that woman with the issue of blood, she touched the hem of his garment, and she got healed. Because she heard that the healer was coming in town. And she was not going to be dissuaded or discouraged. As a matter of fact, there was a short fellow named Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, and they had a bad reputation for ripping people off. You know, uh, you know, one coin for the governor and two coins for me. <laughs> one coin for Pilate, two coins for me. Three coins for Caesar. Six coins for me. So he had a reputation, bad reputation of ripping people off and pocketing a lot of the proceeds. But yet Zacchaeus, in his own corrupt way, in his own corrupt heart, heard about Jesus that was a miracle worker. And he needed uh, to get Jesus' attention. Not because he was short, but he needed a miracle in his heart to stop thieving, to stop conniving swindling and cheating people. He needed a miracle of heart, a change of heart. So he found out and he, he plotted out the route that Jesus was going to take. He did his homework, just like you have your little, your little, uh, what do we call it? The, we, 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 we the, uh, the, the wish list, the wish box, or the bucket list. Yeah, my bucket list is to meet Jesus. Amen, I'm, I'm, I want to invite him to my house. Oh, you're not going to be able to get Jesus to come to your house. First of all, you're a sinner, and he's not going to go to your house at all. People, don't you know who you are? He knows who you are when he first looks at you. No, I, I, he did his homework, and he plotted and planned, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree, short as he was, because he knew that nobody was going to see him. Amen. For example, okay, um, I just need uh, five people real quick, five people to come up and, and Miss Nyla. Amen. Five people just come up real quick to the front in the middle and this time and miss nine. So I need five people plus nine. Come on, Amen. Praise God. Now I was one of these Zacchaeus. Jesus. <laughs> 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 
too short. <laughs> so keep us so short at night. Okay? And definitely, Brother Thompson, let's switch. You stay in front of Brother Thompson. She's not saying anything. <laughs> she, she's not saying anything now because you can't even see me. <laughs> well, Carson, let alone anybody see me. <laughs> And she's jumping and everything. Jump, jump, Mary. And so you still can't see Jesus, right? So how in the world? And that's why there's hundreds and hundreds of people around us trying to see Jesus. Now they can't see Jesus. So what does that kid do? He says, I know what I'm going to do. Here we go. Step, step up. You have permission. Step up here. Step up here. Oh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> accepting no for an answer. I need to see Jesus. And he's coming yes. to my house. Yes. Amen. Yes. So there are a lot of things that are trying to block you from getting to Jesus. Yes. Amen. But you, you have to be determined yes. that you're going to press yes. your way yes. to the Lord and get yes. yes. Amen. Even if folks are saying, oh, he's just preaching so long. Oh. When are we going to go home? And you came to get a miracle from God. You came to get a healing from God. Amen. And the preachers are preaching and preaching and teaching and teaching. And they said, they're just taking so long. It don't take all that reverend. It don't take all that teacher. And you said, give me more, give me more, because God, you're speaking to my heart. You're giving me my answer. Don't cut it off right now. Keep going. Tell me more. Tell me more, Lord. And I'm not just talking about the preaching, because I'm long-winded. <laughs> but, but I'm talking about there are things that we need. And other there are times where people are listening to the out crowd, or what they call the in crowd, and say, you're going to church? Church? Them hypocrites up in there, not church. You don't need no church. Come on, child, let's go to the club. We, we have to get the party. Doing the bump. Doing the shingling in the boogaloo. The huckabuck. <laughs> the twist. The mashed potatoes. Come on. I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to have enjoyment and pleasure. No. Uh, but there are times people are trying to dissuade you from serving yeah. the Lord. I know that's fair. So if you, if you go to church, if you give your life to God, you, you're going to be corny. You're going to be square. You're, your life's going to be dull. It's going to be full of do's and don'ts. And you, you can't do this and you can't do that. And you can't do that. And you have to do this and you have to. God came to set us free. Free from bondage and sin. And to give us liberty. Amen. Liberty to know God in the pardon of our sins. Liberty to be free from the, 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 the snares and the, and the bondage and shackles that Satan has on us as his prisoner. Because Satan takes all of his prisoners to hell. And ultimately the lake of fire. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And look at this. Uh, it, when it comes to uh, you know, the, the overcoming the naysayers, the, the, the ten lepers had to overcome the naysayers. Jesus, thou son of David, 
Have mercy on us. And what did the naysayers do? What did the crowd do? Hush up. Be quiet. Stop all that going on. The Bible says they cried out the louder when the crowd tried to suppress their voices. Be quiet. Jesus! Thou son of David! Be quiet and all that. Call out on Jesus. Jesus! They even called out the louder. Because they were determined that they were going to get a blessing. And forget about the naysayers. I need a blessing from the I have leprosy, y'all. You don't. I do. I need to be healed. If you're satisfied, good. I'm not satisfied. Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. What he says, the early bird that gets the worm. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Amen. And sometimes that squeaky wheel drives people crazy. <laughs> Somebody put some oil on that wheel. Just driving you insane. Almost like that faucet that just keeps... Overnight, you're sleeping. You're tossing it. Well, somebody just fix that faucet. Amen. You might not be a plumber, but you want to become a plumber. You want to go to Google or something. How do I fix this thing? Amen. Even if you have to shut the water supply off, at least you'll get a good night's sleep. <laughs> They'll fix it in the morning. But they had the ten lepers had to overcome that uh, when they were crying out to Jesus, they had to overcome the crowd that tried to hush them. Rahab, Rahab the harlot, she had to overcome her lifestyle and how people looked at her. But she had to go to her family to say, the men of God promised me that if I would help them to peruse the city, they would save me and our family alive when they come to invade Jericho. And sure enough, her family listened. And her family was saved. Amen. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down and those inhabitants were destroyed by the children of Israel, by the children of God. But Rahab the harlot and her family were saved. Who's going to believe a report from a harlot? Thanks be to God, her family did. And that harlot got her family saved. What? Getting saved through a harlot? Preposterous. Never happened. It did. Mary Magdalene, seven demons cast out of her by Jesus. And, and, and she had that reputation of being demon-possessed. She must have been a terrible, terrible woman. Must have been very uh, uh, demonic. But now Jesus delivers her. But she's coming with a good news report. I saw the Lord. And guess what? She was the first one to see Jesus. Now us, us sanctimonious Christians would say, well, no. Jesus didn't appear to her first. She was demon possessed. Jesus would have probably appeared, or who he should have appeared to first, was, you know, the Virgin Mary or to this one or to that one, somebody that was in the hierarchy of life. But a woman that was demon-possessed, Jesus showing up to her first after his resurrection, the very first person that he appeared to was who? Mary Magdalene, who the seven demons were cast out of? Yep. See, God is thinking about the people that we often write off, that we often discount, that we consider the scourge of the, the scum of the earth, the nobodies. God is looking on the nobodies as the somebodies. Yes. You know, when we look down our noses at the poor and, and we, we uh, abuse them and, and, and we despitefully use them, uh, God loves the poor so much so that the Bible says that when we, when we oppress the poor, we are, uh, what, what, we're doing what to our maker? Reproaching our maker. It's like mocking God, yes. our maker. Yes. 
by oppressing poor people. Why? Because God has an affinity. He has a deep-seated love for poor people because he knows their heart's cry is, I'm needy. I need help. God, help me. I have no food. I'm hungry. I'm cold in the wintertime. I'm burning up hot in the summer. God, I don't have sufficient clothes. I don't have sufficient shoes. God, there's not enough money to feed me and my family. God, I need help. God hears the heart's cry of the poor. He's got a deep-seated love for the poor. What about Noah and his family? Being taunted and mocked for building an ark. Three football fields long. It had never, ever, ever rained on planet Earth. From the time of creation to that day had never rained. And Noah is saying, it's going to rain. What's rain? Water coming down from heaven, and it's going to flood the earth. God said, so we're building this ark. God gave us the instruction to build this ark. Three football fields long, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's like 300 yards long. Mm -hmm. And then they had to build it so wide and so high for all of the animals of the earth to get on at least two by two. Of the good ones, two by two by seven. Of the bad ones, just two by two. Amen. So if it was a, you know, bad animal, vicious animal, uh, just male and female. But if they were good animals, like the dove, there'll be male and female, but seven sets. There'll be 14 doves as opposed to two evil animals or bad animals. But even God gave the opportunity for the evil animals to survive, the bad animals or the vicious animals to survive, just to show how fair he is. That he lets his rain fall on the just and the unjust. He lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust. He lets the just and the unjust uh, experience the fresh air, yeah. the rain, or whatever comes our way. God is just good that way. He's loving that way. But no one is family. They're taunted, and by these naysayers saying, yeah, you got to be kidding. Rain, rain, water coming down from heaven, it has never happened before because it's true. It never has because God would always water the earth from beneath and springs of water would come up and water the earth. So there had never been rain. So now Noah is up there preaching with his family and they're thinking that they all are Looney Tunes. <laughs> Twilight Zone. Amen. And they say, <laughs> and they probably were selling tickets and eating popcorn and selling candy and pretzels, you know, uh, while they're making a spectacle of Noah and his family building this ark until the ark was finished. God told Noah to bring the animals selected to come into the ark, close up the door, and now rain comes. And it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And didn't it rain? No oh, children, didn't it rain? Let us in! Open! Open the door! They're believers, but they're believers too late. Like in the day of judgment. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. Let me into heaven, but it's too late. You had the opportunity when you're on earth. You laughed at it. You taunted it. You sneered. You jeered. You denied it. You listened to Satan's message and his servants. You listen to the devil's children when God's children were trying to tell you that the way of eternal life was to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. When God's children were trying to tell you, amen, that you needed to coexist in love and peace and harmony uh, with all people and to find God's plan to achieve eternal life. But no, you, you listen to Satan and the world system as they gave their contradictory reports of how to live divisively and separatistically while taunting the big lie that there's no heaven or hell by brazenly spewing out the false teachings that heaven and hell are right here on earth. Mm -hmm. But who shall believe the report of the Lord? Lord. Who hath believed that report? 
And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So I could go on and on talking about the naysayers uh, when it came to Moses and Aaron who went before Pharaoh 10 times to demand Pharaoh to let God's people go. I could talk about the woman at the well, amen, uh, who after Jesus convinced her, amen, that he was the one that could give her water uh, that would proceed up out of her life, out of her loins, praise God, that everlasting water that she would never have to drink again. And she went, ran into the city and said, come see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. And the whole city of men came to see Jesus. And after they had a personal encounter with Jesus, they said, now we believe that Jesus is Lord, not because of what you said, but now we believe him because of what we have witnessed ourselves. Now we know by way of personal testimony who Jesus is. Not just because you know. Because then you know that it's, it's, it's important for us to know Jesus personally rather than somebody else that we know, knowing him? Is, is that going to get you in heaven? Oh, God, you got to let me into heaven because my grandmom served you. My daddy was a deacon. My cousin sang in the choir, Lord. Lord, my, my friends, they went to church every Sunday. Yes, they did. You got to let me in because I'm a part of them. Some kind of way. I hope. I'm none of, I'm none of, I'm not even connected because I don't know you. Or there are going to be people saying, Lord, you got to let me into heaven because remember this, Lord. Remember this. Remember you, you heard me preaching. I'm the Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You remember that voice, Lord? Jesus said, I don't know you. I never knew you. Go to the lake of fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. But Lord, I prophesied in your name. Yeah, you talked about me, but you never knew me. Lord, I cast out devils in your name. Those weren't really devils. That was just a show. Remember those people that you paid to stage a demon casting out service? Remember those people that you, uh, you know, gave that after offering and, you know, when, when they said, uh, we, yeah, we, 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 uh, the Lord said uh, that, that there's a hundred people going to give a thousand dollars. Remember that person you gave them uh, $20,000 that you promised that you would give them after they hustled? my people. Lord, I did many wonderful works in your name. Jesus said you did it all to praise you. All to build you up, to lift you up and give you top billing, to give you, to put you in the limelight, to make you famous. Because people in essence were worshiping you and not me. Depart from me, you cursed of iniquity. I know you not. Go to the lake of fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. And then the man Jesus healed who was blind from birth. Jesus spat in the clay, spat in the, in the dirt, the dust, made clay with the spit and the, and, the, and the dirt, put it on his eyes, and he said, go wash in the pool, Siloam. By interpretation, the name is the pool called Sent. He had never seen before, born blind, never seen before. He's escorted to the pool of Siloam. He washes, and now for the first time in his entire life, he sees. Thank you, Jesus. And he goes running back to Jesus, thanking him. Lord, thank you for the miracle of sight. And you would think that people would be happy for him and with him. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. How did this happen? Who did this? It was Jesus. You would think they'd, be, they'd just be happy, glad, and, and elated and ecstatic and excited about what took place. He did what? He healed you, told you what? And what did he, he spat? Ew, dis, despicable. That's disgusting. That wouldn't be of God. God doesn't operate with spit and dirt. That's unsanitary. That can't be God. That must be a Beelzebub. And he did what? Told you to go wash 
on the Sabbath day? He told you to do something on the Sabbath day? Surely he's not a God. He must be a sinner now. And what was his name? And where is he? These people wanted to kill Jesus instead of rejoice over what he had done. So they weren't prepared to listen to the man that got healed. They weren't prepared to listen. Pharaoh wasn't prepared to listen to Moses and Aaron. And the disciples weren't prepared to listen to Mary Magdalene or Mary, the mother of James, or Salome when they said, we have seen uh, the angel, and, and the angel told us that Jesus is risen from the dead. And, and the other two men that were walking in the city, they just chose not to believe. So now Jesus, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, we're bringing it to a close, finally. Somebody say, finally. <laughs> Jesus comes in and he rebukes the apostles. He upbraids them. Which means he scolded them like a parent would harshly scold their parents, uh, their children. And it says here in Mark's Gospel, when it says, I'll, I'll read from verse 9, it says, Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Verse 14, afterward, he appeared unto the eleven. Now he's got to do it by himself. I have to make a personal appearance. Because they just don't get it. I, I just have to go firsthand. They're going to have to see me. Because they're not accepting the, the report and the person of these other individuals that said that I rose from the dead. So verse 14. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me and upbraided them. He scolded them. That means harshly told them off with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So for the lady's sake, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, Salome, for their sake and for those other two disciples, which were not a part of the apostles' uh, company, but there were just two other believers in the Lord, because Jesus, Jesus said, because you didn't believe their report, I'm scolding you because you didn't believe. Why didn't you believe them? Why didn't you take their word and, and hear their testimony and receive it. Shame on you. He was scolding them. And so he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now get this. That really put the, the apostles in their place. Because they were in the same position to hear the gospel, to hear the message that he was risen, and they believed not. And they were going to be, futuristically, the recipients of being damned, lost. Because Jesus said, go you into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. He said, and that's who you were. The ones that believe not. Because wow. didn't the ladies tell you? Didn't the gentlemen tell you? And you believe not? You were about to be lost. So now I want you to go out. And I want you to convince those that you're telling. Of my death, burial, and resurrection. And my coming again. But I want you to tell it with conviction. So that they'll become saved. Because if they embrace that same set of unbelief like you were when the ladies came and when the men came, they're going to be lost eternally just as you would have been because you did not believe when the ladies and the gentlemen spoke to you about me, they'll be just as lost. So now you have a passion and a greater sense of understanding of why you need to preach the way that you preach. 
why you need to preach and teach with intensity and with fervor and with, per, with, with a vested interest. Because it could have been you. And for the grace of God, it, if it weren't for the grace of God, it would have been you. Because the dictate is still the same. The edict is still the same. The consequence is still the same. That he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And I'm going to give you some proof just to back you up. Because apparently it wasn't good enough when the ladies and gentlemen spoke to you. I'm going to give you some signs. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. So I'm going to give you power to cast out devils so that they can believe. Just like when Moses said, well, God, how, how, I'm going before the children of Israel and Pharaoh, but how are they going to believe that you sent me and that, that I'm truly your representative? God said, take your hand, put it in your bosom. Okay, take it out. Lepers, white as ah! Put it back in your bosom. Plug it out. Oh, thank you, God. Back to normal. Praise God. Take the serpent. Throw it down. Ah, turn it into a, take the uh, staff. Throw it down. Turns into a serpent. He runs. Pick it up by the tail. Turns back into a staff again. Take the water. Pour it on the ground, on the dust. Turns into blood. These are some signs I'm giving you just to back you up, to let the people know that I have sent you. Yeah. That I'm telling you that you have support and you have backup from me. So you shall speak with new tongues. You shall take up serpents. And if, they, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt you. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm giving you some signs for confirmation that I've sent you, that I am the Christ. Verse 19, so then after the Lord had Spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. That's, that's it. The Lord is working with you. You're not working alone. The Lord working with them and confirming the word. With what? Signs following. So that means that we have to cultivate a relationship with God that he's going to put some action to our words. Amen. He's going to put some verification to our words, the things that we're sharing. He's going to uh, put power in our testimony Amen. so that when we testify, we're testifying with a vested interest because bottom line is I'm trying to let you know that your soul is on fire Amen. and that we have to put this fire out I'm coming to let you know that your soul is lost and there is a consequence for lost souls to end up in hell fire. And I'm so concerned about you as if I'm concerned about my own child, my own spouse, my own mother, my own father for their safety. I'm so concerned about your safety and your eternal salvation that this is why I'm telling you the way that I'm telling you, with the intensity that I'm telling you, because I'm considering you as if you're my own flesh and blood. That's the kind of intensity, not just to say, here, I just want to tell you about Jesus. Okay, next, I want to tell you about Jesus, next, no. That soul could end up in hellfire forever, in torment, weeping and gnashing of teeth, burning forever with no end, and their course of eternity could have been changed as a result of you making an impact on their lives. Because think about it. Somebody somewhere was praying for you. Somebody somewhere told you about Jesus. Somebody somewhere lived a life for Jesus. Somebody somewhere took the time to even be on your bad side by just telling you like a T.I. is. Yes or no? Did somebody love you enough to tell you about Jesus? I think that's why you're saved. Because somebody took the time to be unselfish to say, I have to take a little time out from my busy schedule to let my light shine 
for this person, that they might see my good works, but not really mine, but what the Lord has put in me, and then in turn they will glorify my Father which is in heaven. Didn't they? Didn't somebody do that for you? So are we going to be selfish and just keep it to ourselves and say, well, I got mine. <laughs> Too bad for everybody else. Tough? No. No. We have to pass it on. Amen. 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 Like that song says, I've shouted from the mountain top. Once you've experienced it, the Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. It's hymn number 362, and it goes like this. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God. comes to you sharing your testimony or trying to win a soul for Christ. May those individuals humble themselves, swallow their pride. Forget about your color. Forget about you being male or female or from the other side of the tracks or not being socially or economically advantaged because you're disadvantaged or whatever, but that they'll only see Jesus in you. May God richly bless you and have you smile upon you is our prayer. We're inviting you, amen, to Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins, come into your heart, and reveal himself to you fully and completely because sometimes the words of people just won't satisfy. And so we know that the Lord can still make personal appearances and he'll come to you personally if you don't get it to other people that are trying to tell you. But at least we've opened the door and put our foot in the door for Jesus now to pry his way in to reveal himself to you, that he can become your Lord and Savior. But not being a harsh dictator, but that he'll be a, a benevolent Lord, God, and Savior of your life, so that you'll share in the things of God, that you'll become an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I thank God for his word today. I thank for the peace, amen. And I thank God for the tranquility of even the deliverance of this message, which is, just unique today, but it's all because God loves you. And so could, if you could just look to a neighbor, left or right of you, front or behind you, and just say, neighbor, God really loves you. Put your trust in him. Amen. Let us all please stand. Thank you. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our souls have filled. We thank you, Lord God, that we had the humility enough and you gave us grace enough to humble ourselves to hear someone tell us about Jesus. Where we might have been resistant and not wanting to hear about it, we didn't want to hear that church stuff, that God stuff, that religious stuff, that Jesus stuff. But Lord God, you made a way 
by situations and circumstances of life that we would no longer be resistant to what was being said the next time. We humbled ourselves, Lord God, because we were now ripe and primed to receive the word of God because we were hungry and thirsty for righteousness. We were lost and undone. Our souls were in despair. Lord God, we knew that mortality, oh God, would soon, oh God, grip our lives, oh God, and that immortality was just around the corner, but we were so very uncertain and so afraid of what was about to approach us, not being able to put our finger on it, not being able to identify what those fears were, but Lord, you were placing within the depths of our hearts and souls to know that it was a fearful looking forward to going into eternity without Christ and that there were severe consequences for doing so. And so Lord, you set us up and we thank you for setting us up, Lord God, to be in the position to now be ready to hear the word of God, to be ready to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be ready to hear someone challenge us to accept you and receive you as personal Lord and Savior. And became like Zacchaeus, though short in stature, he got your attention. When he felt, Lord God, there were just too many people that would block his way of you seeing him and him seeing you, he climbed up into a sycamore tree. And so now, Lord God, we pray that those that don't know you will climb up into the sycamore trees of their lives. Get away from the crowd. Get away from the naysayers. Get away from those negative voices and those servants of Satan and that social media that's so divergent, Lord God, that, that are so separatist. God, and we pray that we'll get into a single solitary place away from the voices of the crowds and the naysayers where we can only hear you telling us to come down from the sycamore tree that you're coming to our heart house to make your abode with us. And God, we give you glory and praise for loving us so much that if we were the only person in the whole wide world to have to die for, you would have done it for us because you did. And we give you glory. And so now, Lord, as we prepare to dismiss from this high and holy place, but not from your presence, we pray that you will go with us and stand by us. We pray for the peace of Haiti, Dominican Republic, Colombia, United States, and all of the countries that are in turmoil, especially experiencing racial strife right now. And we pray, Lord God, that you'll unify us and let us know that it's not about flesh and blood that we're waging war against, but it's about those powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places, the rulers of darkness of this world, it's against Satan and his angels, Lord God, not about people. Oh God, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that we will be our brothers and sisters keeper and take it upon ourselves to be responsible to pray one for another, even for those that consider themselves to be our enemies. Open their eyes and let them know we are not their enemies, oh God, but the devil and his angels are. And so Father, as we dismiss, Go with us, stand by us, bless us, and make us a blessing until we meet again. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may he rest, rule, and abide with us both now, henceforth, and evermore. Let all of God's people sing. Amen.